All right, we're going to talk about how world-class product teams are winning in the AI era. And I know we're all so excited about AI. We've been hearing great talks about it. But I'm going to be kind of a party pooper for a second. <laughs> and the reason why is because over 70% of the data transformations fail. Let me say it again. And, and I'm sorry to bring down the mood, but it's true. Over 70% of the digital transformations fail. And this is because the way we've been transforming companies is now obsolete. The classic approach of, we're going to hire an expensive consulting firm that is going to prepare a beautiful presentation and tell us what to do, but then it's going to leave. And then you have to do it. Just that doesn't fly. We've also seen the another approach, which is we're going to set up an innovation lab. A bunch of cool kids with MacBooks in the corner. We're going to give them a budget. And then they're going to bring great ideas. But that doesn't fly anymore. I've seen this happen over and over again in product teams. And I'm going to give you three examples. Number one, agile. We've all heard, we need to be more agile. Agile is the way, we need to iterate faster. Instead, we got this. <laughs> and I promise I've been trying to figure this out, still can't. <laughs> to me, this is the opposite of Agile. But then we were told, we need to be product-led. We need to build a product that sells by itself. But then, we got this. It's a confused setup of free trials with freemium plans that are very confusing. And as soon as the user signs up, we spam them with sales emails to put them on the phone and squeeze it at that paid plan. And now here we are. We need to be AI powered. Because now, of course, if you slap the word AI somewhere, something will buy. And this is me, like this is literally a toothbrush that I bought that said it's AI-powered. <laughs> but I still need to brush my teeth. <laughs> so I'm kind of confused. And I'm not kidding, this is true, this is my toothbrush. So, so I want to play a game with you. If you don't mind, bring your phone and answer this question for me. I would love to know, what do you think is the reason why most digital transformations fail. And there are three options for you. Uh, in a second, we're going to see a slide that is going to let you participate. So you can help me, please. Um, we have three options. Number one is lack of strategy and vision, AKA, let's blame it on the CEO. Number two is lack of team adoption. And number three, is just poor implementation of the technology of the new processes. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Yes, use that QR code or join the website, introduce the code. And I'm very curious to read the room and see what you think is the number one reason why most data transformations fail. And I think we have a clear winner. Uh, around 60% of the room, and, and we're talking about 1,500 product leaders, so you pretty much have a good product sense, are thinking that number one reason is lack of clear strategy and vision. Let's switch to the next slide, because I want to disclose the answer. But you are right. The number one reason is lack of clear strategy and vision. But in reality, it's a combination of all of the above. And my main point is that digital transformation needs buy-in from the very top. If this is a pet project, it will die. This is a true strategic priority for any organization. Otherwise, it's better not to do it. So your mission as a product leader is to make your company win in the AI era. Your mission, yes, you, as a product leader, is to make your company win in the AI era. Because winners and losers are being defined right now. And the barrier of entry is relatively low. I believe the barrier of entry will be much higher later on. And if you move fast, you can definitely get first mover advantage. 
So I want you to meet some of the winners. These are some of the companies that we help navigate digital transformation in the age of AI. And as you can notice, these are not just big tech companies. We're talking about companies that are global, not just in New York or San Francisco or London. They are in different industries, such as consumer packaged goods, financial services, or healthcare. But they understand a few things. Number one, every company is a digital company. And I would argue a lot of these companies actually have more tech professionals than many big tech companies. They also understand that, in fact, any transformation is more about the people than the technology. And ultimately, we believe that a success is more of a product of daily habits than a big push, once in a lifetime transformation, because ultimately, this won't change behavior. So what I want to show you right now is the three common characteristics that we've observed over these clients. What are the things that they are doing and how are they doing them in order to stay competitive and lead during the AI era? Number one, product teams are contributing to revenue growth, not just user value. And long gone are the days where just building an excellent user experience is a competitive advantage. And please do not get me wrong, building an excellent consumer experience is very important and it is very hard, but it's also table stakes. It just doesn't cut it anymore. The next frontier is to build products that users love and are willing to pay for. And if the user is not the one paying, someone else has to, could be an advertiser but there has to be a direct connection to revenue. And I know some of you might be thinking, well, but isn't the sales team supposed to sell? We're not, we can't be fully accountable for the revenue of the company. And I partially agree with that. Uh, even though there are situations where the product team can be fully responsible for a big part of the revenue, especially when it's generated directly through a self-serve channel. But even in the cases where revenue is generated through a sales team, it is very important for the product team to have a much stronger connection and to be much more accountable for the ultimate outcome. And here is my next point. Sales is not just all go to market. To me, product teams have to be deeply integrated with the entire go to market function, which includes marketing and customer success. And we can all be friends. And I'm going to show you how. Here is an example of partnering with the marketing team. We know that it is possible to leverage our product as an inbound growth channel, and this is complementary to any other marketing channels. So we can convert free users into paid users, and we can also convert paid users into bigger tiers. And this can all be done directly through product. Thinking of sales, we can combine our bottoms up motion PLG, with a toned down motion, more traditional sales approach. And here is how product can help us enrich the marketing qualified lead. That's a term that I absolutely hate. We can better enrich the marketing qualified lead if we understand the product activity. And we also understand who is this user? What are other users that belong to the same account? What is the account ROI expectation? So sales can become way better engaged with the right leads at the right time. And ultimately, customer success team, the classic second-class citizen in go-to-market. But that doesn't mean that they can contribute to a stronger partnership, hence stronger revenue. We know how important it is to increase product adoption for some of our existing clients, because that can not only help us prevent churn, it can also help us First, increase the expansion, but also the renewal way before it's really all time. We've all been in those situations where our annual subscription is about to expire and suddenly customer success reaches out. How convenient. Second trend is that product teams have finally sit at the table. This is not just under technology. This is not just under the chief technology officer anymore. The product is at the C-level 
and the peers are the chief technology officer and other business functions. This is a statistic of one, this time a year ago, I was sharing a similar statistic here in New York. I mentioned that over one third of the Fortune 100 already had a chief product, of, product officer. I'm very happy to report that today that number has increased and it's over 50% of the Fortune 100 companies that already have a chief product officer. And the names might change, could be called chief digital officer or even an SVP of product as long as that person reports directly into the CEO. So there are additional implications for this. We're seeing that the career ladder in product is being much more flat. Roles such as director of product or even VP of product are acting more as a player coach. And this has some benefits. We are learning that we can ship faster and that is allowing those leaders to be more touched with reality and really understand what's going on and getting their hands dirty. And this is applying across the board in all kinds of organizations that we're seeing. Another important implication is that the product management as a function is truly becoming more strategic. Traditionally, it was mostly focused on development, on, on building the thing. But as, I, as we think about the strategy in terms of three components, discovery, development, and delivery, now we see how product teams are way more equipped to do discovery and delivery. Traditional backgrounds in product are no longer just for technical folks. We're seeing a lot of business folks growing as product leaders and skills related to pricing, positioning, go-to-market are more critical than ever. This is ultimately what's helping us elevate the role and influence strategy. And with regards to product discovery, same thing, no more handoffs to the user research team. Product teams are being embedded into the discovery phase with the user research team. And if you have a user research team, that's great. Bonus points, but that's not an excuse for you not to be involved in that part. So this is the last uh, potentially most disruptive piece that we are seeing. Product teams are doing more with less people and more AI. Yeah. We learn, a lot of us, during these last years, that it is possible to ship faster and more effectively, even with a smaller team, if we use the right team and the right technology. So what this means is that a lot of product organizations are getting rid of a lot of undercovered product management roles. No more agile coaches, scrum masters, product owners, and other confusing roles that have a place, but definitely a smaller place, and they are definitely not product management roles. Especially with the rise of AI, these are the first roles that are absolutely being disrupted. This is another thing that is very interesting to me. Like the, I don't know who coined the term AI PM, but that's not a thing. Like PM. It's a PM, and obviously AI is important, and it's a technology that, that we all need to adopt the same way we adopted mobile or cloud or others. So what is true is that the PMs that are adopting AI now are able to replace PMs who don't, and the ratio is not one-to-one. -one. Here are some specific use cases that we are seeing product teams use in terms of augmenting their productivity with AI. Number one, session replays. This is not new. What's really new is how companies like LockRocket are using session replays to help product teams literally go to the right session replay. To know they, they, the tool will read all the replays for you and will tell you which ones are the ones that are discovering technical issues, or usability issues, so you can go straight into those. Another very interesting use case is how companies like Product Board are turning user feedback into feature ideas. They're literally gathering all the different customer data points and then linking that to potential feature ideas that can be added into a roadmap. So this is not just about summarizing feedback. It's truly about influencing the priorities for what to build next. Another use case we're seeing with a company called Chameleon is how adoption can be increased. We are all aware of the classic FAQ sections that nobody wants to read, but now you can have literally a coach next to you on every website that can read the website for you in multiple languages and can create a tutorial for you whenever, however you want it. Another interesting use case, this one is by Mixpanel, is turning data 
into insights. We're seeing how anyone, not just a PM, not just an engineer, not, that, not just a data scientist, can speak to data without running SQL queries or any other command. You can ask normal questions through a database, and they can return beautiful dashboards. And you can ask those questions anywhere, including Slack and other systems. And last but not least, we're also seeing the rise of the creation of better product documents like PRDs or service. It's a company like Sprig is helping PMs create the right service, the right notifications, the right documents according to their best practices, leveraging AI. So in summary, the top three things that we are seeing world-class product teams do to win in the AI era are, number one, product is becoming way more accountable for revenue, not just adding user value. Number two, we're seeing how the product teams are finally getting a seat at the table, and it's not just a sub-function of technology. And number three, we're seeing how product teams are becoming smaller and faster with artificial intelligence. Again, winners and losers are being defined right now. And your mission as a product leader is to make your company win in the digital era of artificial intelligence. Here's the good news. You are not alone, and we're here to help you. Thank you so much.